Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILOPathology.com. This is the series on diseases of kidney. In this particular video, I'll be uh, talking mainly on the clinical manifestations of renal diseases. I'll be planning to cover the entire uh, chapter on disease of renal kidney in the coming videos, right? So, the overview of this particular talk is, we'll just briefly discuss the anatomy and functions of the kidney. We'll look into the disease burden of renal diseases. And finally, we will see what are all the clinical manifestations of renal diseases. So, we all know uh, kidneys are a pair of uh, vital organs which are located in the retroperitoneal space of abdomen, right? So, and we also know that the functional unit of kidneys are the nephron. So, nephron is the functional unit of kidney and that is responsible for filtering blood and producing urine. Right? So, what are all the functions of kidney? As we saw already, the kidneys excretes the waste products of metabolism. It regulates the body's concentration of water, salt, calcium, phosphorus and other anions and cations, thereby maintaining the appropriate acid base of the plasma. Not only these functions, kidneys also serve as an endocrine organ, that's how they secrete erythropoietin, which is responsible for the red cell production, right? As you all know that renin, which maintains the blood pressure and prostaglandins, it also regulates vitamin D metabolism. Now, what are all the various diseases of the kidney? And let's look at the burden of diseases of kidney. We should know that these are responsible for enormous amounts of morbidity and mortality. And as per the WHO, the World Health Organization, around 10% of the global population is affected by chronic kidney disease. Okay, And that's a worldwide health crisis. Billions die each year because they do not have, they do not have access to affordable treatment. And approximately around 2 million individuals worldwide are presently receiving dialysis or a kidney transplant to keep themselves alive. And that is the disease burden. Now, how do we study the diseases of kidney? Basically, by dividing them into four basic morphologic components. What are those? We look into the diseases of the kidney. The, we look into the diseases of glomeruli. We look into the disease of tubules, we look into disease of interstitium and blood vessels. Why do we have to separate these headings? Because each of these, you know, are unique in the way they present, unique in the way they are affected. For example, the glomeruli disease, disease of glomeruli are most often, you know, they are immunologically mediated. Diseases of tubules are most often caused by toxic or infectious agents. Now, having said that, we need to understand that some disorders affect more than one structure. You know, it's not just glomeruli alone. It can affect glomeruli and tubules and interstitium and so on. And all forms of chronic kidney disease ultimately damage all the above four components. And that is what we call it as end-stage renal disease. Now, we should realize that the functional reserve of kidney is very large. So much so that by the time the clinical manifestations or disease is evident, you know, much of the damage would have occurred. And that is the reason why recognizing early signs and symptoms is of utmost clinical importance. Now, let us see what are all those signs and symptoms are clinical manifestations of various renal diseases. So these can be, you know, categorized into various uh, headings. One, they can manifest with azotemia and uremia. They can be, you know, uh, manifest with nephritic or nephrotic syndrome. They can manifest just asymptomatic hematuria or proteinuria. There could be acute kidney disease, chronic acute kidney injury, chronic kidney disease or even end-stage renal disease. They can be renal tubular defects with various manifestations. They can manifest with infections, urinary tract infections or uh, alkali or nephrolithia, which is obstruction and tumors. So, let's look into one by one. The first one is azotemia and uremia. Azotemia basically you know, is related to decrease in glomerular filtration rate. What is azotemia? Azotemia by definition is increase in the blood urea nitrogen and creatinine levels. Okay. So, azotemia is a feature of both acute and chronic kidney injury. Now, azotemia can be pre-renal or post-renal. 
So what is this pre-renal causes? Basically, there is no parenchymal damage, but the renal function is impaired because of hypoperfusion. So we need to know the causes of hypoperfusion, which includes hypotension, shock, congestive cardiac failure, and volume depletion due to various causes and resulting in fluid loss. Okay. Whereas post-renal acetemia is basically due to obstruction of urine flow distal to the kidney. And remember, whenever we have a post-renal acetemia, this is reversible. Okay. If you re relieve the obstruction and the azotemia becomes reversible. Now, what is this uremia? Uremia is basically azotemia plus clinical signs and symptoms. Now, what is this? They manifest with failure of you know, renal excretory function along with metabolic and endocrine manifestation and that's basically because of renal damage. So, just remember, uremia is azotemia plus clinical signs and symptoms. Moving on to nephritic syndrome. What is this? It is basically a clinical entity which is caused by inflammatory glomerular damage. Okay, it's a glomerular disease and the features include hematuria, reduced glomerular filtration rate, mild to moderate proteinuria and hypertension. Remember, hematuria can be grossly visible or microscopic hematuria. Okay, if you do a urine analysis, you can find RBCs in urine along with some red cell casts. So, nephritic syndrome is a classical representation, presentation of acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis and rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. So, this is nephritic syndrome. In contrast, nephrotic syndrome is also a clinical entity where you know you have these following features. It is characterized by heavy proteinuria and that thereby leading to hypoalbuminemia and that might lead to edema. Right? And the fourth and the fifth one are hyperlipidemia and consequent lipiduria. These are the five important features of nephrotic syndrome. So let me tell you, I will be uh, discussing in detail about the differences between nephritic and nephrotic syndrome in another, in another uh, tutorial. So as of now, just remember these clinical features of nephritic and nephrotic syndrome. The next one is asymptomatic hematuria or proteinuria, which are, um, as the name says, they are not symptomatic. You just find, you know, on a routine, regular urine examination, you find RBCs and even protein in urine. And that's probably because of mild glomerular diseases. Now, moving on to acute kidney injury. What is that? It was earlier referred to as acute renal failure. Now, the term is replaced as acute kidney injury or AKI. What, do, what are the features? There is rapid decline in the glomerular filtration rate, okay, within hours to days. And that lead to dysregulation of fluid and electrolyte balance and there is retention of metabolic waste products. There is accumulation of urea and creatinine. All these are manifestations of acute kidney injury. And the cause could be glomerular pathology, it could be vascular pathology or even tubulo interstitial pathology. So that's about acute kidney injury. And moving on to chronic kidney disease, earlier referred to as chronic renal failure. Now it is CKD, chronic kidney disease, where there is diminished glomerular filtration rate for a period of over three, more than three months. And the GFR is almost always less than 60 ml per minute. And normal GFR, you should know that it's around 90 to 120 ml per minute. Along with diminished the glomerular filtration rate, there is persistent albuminuria. Okay. And it in, the, in its most severe form, these CKDs manifest as uremia and the cause of CKDs are, it's basically a, the end result of variety of renal diseases you know? and the most common ones are the diabetes and hypertension. No end stage renal disease, as I told you, it's a manifestation of various forms of renal diseases where the glomerular filtration rate is less than 5% of normal. Remember, normal GFR is 90 to 120 ml per minute. So, less than 5% accounts around 4.5 to 6 ml per minute. So, that is less glomerular filtration rate and this is actually a terminal stage of uremia. Moving on to renal tubular defects, they manifest as polyuria nocturia and electrolyte disorders and these defects can further classified into uh, the structural defects or the functional defects. The structural defects includes nephronophthysis whereas the functional defects can be inherited or acquired and some of the causes of inherited functional defects include familial nephrogenic diabetes, cystinuria, 
and renal tubular acidosis whereas lead nephropathy is an example of acquired you know, functional defect of renal tubules now urinary tract infection so you all know you how you all have heard of UTIs, right? Urinary tract infection is characterized by either bacteriuria or pyuria. Bacteriuria meaning presence of bacteria in urine, pyuria meaning presence of white blood cells in urine, WBCs in urine. So they can be symptomatic or asymptomatic. Right. So, if it affects the kidney, we call it as pyelonephritis, and if it affects the bladder, we call it as cystitis. So, so basically, they present with various manifestations. Sometimes it can be asymptomatic. Symptomatic, you know, they can manifest with fever, you know, burning maturation, and so on. So, again, nephrolithiasis can be asymptomatic or symptomatic. If it is symptomatic, you know, most often nephrolithiasis manifests with various forms of colic and hematuria and or obstructive symptoms and of course renal tumors is again another vast topic where they can present with varied clinical manifestations so we know that we have seen these are the various clinical manifestations of uh, renal diseases which in, which um, ranges from simple rise in blood urea nitrogen and creatinine to all these various clinical manifestations so azotemia uremia nephritic nephrotic syndrome asymptomatic proteinuria or hematuria, acute kidney injury, tonic kidney disease and end-stage renal diseases and we saw the renal tubular defects and its manifestations and the urinary tract infections, right? So, that's about the anatomy and functions of kidney, the renal diseases, the burden, we talked about it and then the various clinical manifestations. So, that completes today's topic, a very simple topic on the clinical manifestations of renal diseases. And the next class, the next tutorial, I will be discussing about the glomerular diseases. We will talk about the normal anatomy and functions of uh, glomeruli and then how the glomeruli, you know, respond to various injurious agents. And then we talk about the pathogenesis of glomerular diseases. So, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. If you have liked this video, hit the like button. It's customary to ask all these things. Do comment if you find this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe and do share. And keep waiting for another video on renal pathology coming soon. Thank you.